Welcome. Uh, thanks, everybody, for attending. I'm going to cover today Project Workspaces, uh, a new solution that uh, allows for collaboration and seamless integration with HP PPM and, and SharePoint. So from an agenda perspective, I'm going to cover just a quick product overview via slides. Uh, then we'll jump in and do a demo, and then we'll come back for Q&A. Just a quick introduction to Results Positive. Results Positive is a, a platinum partner of HP Software, a North American platinum partner. Um, and we cover uh, the, the, the SPM space with HP PPM, but also several other areas, uh, including big data and mobile and ALM and BSM and cloud. Um, I actually lead a group uh, here at the Results Positive that, that manages our support services and our staff services as well as a, a product uh, product development team, and so we've collaborated with IT ROI Solutions to bring this solution to market on HP PPM. So let's quickly jump into the product overview. So the key features and benefits as we look at this are really the, the, the ability to have enterprise project collaboration, communication, and, and participation. So what you'll see as we demo this is a seamless synchronization between the two systems. Um, and the ability to display SharePoint data in PPM and PPM data in SharePoint almost uh, uh, seamlessly. So you'll see that as we walk through, walk through the demo. Um, covering the high-level key benefits, um, as you create a project in PPM, you'll create a SharePoint site and you'll have instant dashboards in that SharePoint site that show the PPM data. You can leverage the native document management capabilities of SharePoint as well. Um, and all of this with an easy implementation, something that can be done in one or two or three days, a few days to do the implementation between HP PPM and uh, SharePoint. Um, it also allows the opportunity for some extendable reporting capabilities within HP PPM, and then ex increased accessibility and collaboration uh, around your project team. And so I'm going to run through these benefits in just a little bit of detail. Um, when you create the project workspace within, within, or when you create a project in HP PPM, it immediately creates automatically the project workspace in SharePoint. And when it does that, it does a bunch of, of detailed things. It gives the project manager the site admin rights to the site, and it dynamically gives the team persistent participants view only access rights. Um, and as participants are added to your project via a staffing profile or via uh, being assigned to a task, those participants also will be given rights to that SharePoint site automatically. Um, there's also the ability to apply a SharePoint template for the layout of project sites. So you could have different template, templates in SharePoint for different project types in HP PPM. Um, the document management capabilities allows you within HP PPM to drag and drop documents and they will be stored on SharePoint. Um, you can access them from, from either system and leverage the SharePoint check-in and check-out capabilities. Um, you can share, you know, this, this will allow you to share your project documents with an extended team potentially who has access to SharePoint. And then uh, you can also leverage the SharePoint document workflow and embed the SharePoint document workflow within the SharePoint site that you see within HP PPM. Uh, I talked a, a bit about this earlier, but easy implementation. You can be up and running in just a few days. Um, scripted installations into both HP PPM and SharePoint. There um, could be minor customer specific configurations, and we've embedded the SharePoint site directly into the PPM project overview page and you'll see that as we go through the demo. A couple of other uh, quick points here. Extendable reporting. Um, you can basically create views in HP PPM, and we'll show this in detail, and they're automatically exposed in SharePoint so that you can then add web parts to the SharePoint site to report data from HP PPM. And uh, you can create links within that SharePoint site that take you directly back to the entities in HP PPM, and we'll We'll show that collaboration as we go through it. Ultimately, this provides increased accessibility and collaboration. It really provides for you to allow internal and external project participants online access to a project workspace 
with the information and the artifacts that are in SharePoint. Um, it allows to leverage the collaboration capabilities of SharePoint within your projects, and it allows you to provide a simplified views for extended team members if you wanted to do that as well. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump now into the product demo. So I'm signed into PPM on a project that I've already configured, but I'm actually going to create first a new project. So I'm just going to go ahead and create a project and show you how the SharePoint uh, site creation is done. So I'll just create a project called Oracle eBusiness Upgrade as an example. Um, I'm going to choose my project type. And I'm going to choose my uh, start period and finish period. So we'll say it's August 2014 through December 2014. Now when I go ahead and create that project, you'll notice here that the SharePoint site is now being created for that project. And it will come up here in a second, so it's working on it. And this is actually going out and creating SharePoint site with a predefined template, it's also associating the security for the site in SharePoint. So it's giving the user that's logged into PPM as the project manager the access rights to be the site administrator for that SharePoint site. Um, so at this point you can see we've, we've got our SharePoint site, Oracle eBusiness Upgrade, and it's applied this template uh, that we created it shows project summary information and financial summary and resources assigned. Um, it also has discussion threads and documents and a milestones portlet uh, that aren't populated yet, but you'll notice it's embedded right within the project overview page. So you have visibility to SharePoint here within the project overview page as well. So that's the process when you create a new project, and then every time that you come to the project overview page, the rights are going to be updated for the SharePoint site. So if you were to add people to a staffing profile as an example, those rights would be updated automatically within SharePoint. So for purposes of, of demoing the rest of this, I'm actually going to pull up a project that I, that I created earlier and, and built out the associated financials and staffing profile on so you can see what that looks like in SharePoint. So I'm going to once again jump into the project summary of that project, and you can see now that we have a, a SharePoint site that's embedded. Now one of the things I'm going to do just for, for purposes of demoing this is I'm going to show you the interaction between HP PPM and, and the SharePoint site. So I'm actually going to right click here and open that SharePoint site in a new tab so we can look at it in both places. So we've got the project overview page here. We've got the SharePoint page here. And you can see with the SharePoint page, um, you have the ability to visualize data from HP PPM. So as an example, I have a financial summary on this project and I pulled this information over. You can actually drill directly to that financial summary from um, from the SharePoint site. So you can click and configure these portlets to drill directly into the entities within HP PPM. Um, you can all, I also set a couple up here where I can drill directly to the staffing profile as an example, and that pulls the exact staffing profile up and you can make those staffing profile changes. Um, you can also, uh, I, I just set up one more example here of being able to drill directly to the resource so you can actually modify the resource within HP PPM. So all of these web parts that are part of this template, um, you can add additional web parts to as well. But some of the other features of SharePoint that you might leverage if you're within HP PPM is like the ability to drag and drop documents within, within the solution. So I have a document here called Interfaces. You can actually grab that document and drag it directly into the SharePoint site, and that will upload it within HP PPM. So now we've uploaded that additional document. Um, you have the ability to include discussion threads and other collaboration capabilities of SharePoint within, within the site in HP PPM. So now 
I'm going to show you a couple of other features and capabilities of adding new data to the site. So if we go back to the full site here, um, I'm actually going to show a second page that I configured within the template. So this is my home page. Within my template, I also configured this project details page. And I actually brought some additional data associated with this project onto the project details page. So you can see I'm seeing the timesheets associated with my pro project, some project risks, scope changes, and even some visualizations of uh, pie charts. And you can, you can include any type of web part in SharePoint that SharePoint supports to be able to uh, develop uh, the, the reports or portlets. So the, the use case here would be, so I have uh, one of my project details and I see the timesheets and I see risks and scope changes, but I don't see project issues. And so what I'll do is walk through how we would add those project issues to the SharePoint site. So within SharePoint, what you, as, as the site owner, or the site admin, I can go ahead and edit this SharePoint site. And when I edit the SharePoint site, I can choose within the site where I want to put the, the issues that I want to show. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and say I want it right after timesheets. And when I, when I put my cursor there, I can actually insert a web part. And when I insert the web part, when I insert the web chart part, if I choose the PPM boss and the PPM portlet boss and go ahead and just add that portlet within SharePoint, then I can actually go in and specifically edit this web part. So I'll go ahead and edit this web part. And so what we have here is the ability to select a data source for this web part. And um, so I said I wanted to get project issues an example, and so these are actually uh, views within HP PPM that allow you to bring data into uh, SharePoint. So I'm going to go ahead and pull up this project issues, um, and I'm just going to go ahead and apply that change. And what's going to happen when I do that is you're going to actually see all of the issues within HP PPM will be brought into SharePoint. So this will initially bring all of the issues within that system in. And then what you can do within SharePoint is you can continue to configure this to have additional formatting and additional capabilities. Uh, one thing I will show you here is you do have the ability um, within these grids, and this is native SharePoint functionality within the grids, to actually filter by a specific grid. And so it dynamically will pull up the filters for a given column once you get the grid into SharePoint. So you could filter for all of your critical issues or things like that. And that's, that's native SharePoint functionality. But for purposes of, of showing it within this project details page, I do want to filter this now down to the current project. So you have this filter by current project uh, checkbox here. If you go ahead and apply that, then it's only going to pull the issues for the current project. And you can see we have four issues uh, defined here within it. The other thing that you can do within the scope of, of adding these web parts is actually edit the columns that you want to see and the order that those columns are in. And so I'll kind of go through this and say, I know I want to see the request ID and I want to give it a, a and I'm actually going to call this the issue number. Um, I don't care about the project because I'm already within the scope of the project. Um, I don't care about the detailed description, but I want the issue type, and I'm going to take those off just to give us uh, an idea of it, uh, and we'll just change these to look appropriate. So the project, uh, the priority description, So you can also then change the position of, of your column. So I want to show the request ID first and the description of the issue second. And I'll go ahead and apply that change so we can see that that will clean up the data in this, in this portlet. So now it's starting to look a little bit better. Um, the final thing that we can do is uh, there's a couple of things we would do here. First, we want to change the name of it to say that this is project issues. 
go ahead and apply that change. So now we have our project issues. Now, the other thing you can do is, is change it to be more of a, a data list type as opposed to a grid. So if I apply that change, then it will start to look, it, it actually does the HTML formatting within the portlet so that you can get a better looking visualization. And so now that it's a data list, I actually have the ability to apply a set of HTML templates. So I'll choose this table style one and go ahead and apply that template. And then finally, if we apply those changes and you can see the HTML it built, then we'll have a table that looks like the others within, within the SharePoint site. So that's the process of exposing additional PPM data uh, within SharePoint. And, and there's really no limit on the amount of data that you can actually do within PPM. It's really the amount of views that you can write for the data is fundamentally what, what you can ultimately show in SharePoint. So I'm going to go ahead and save that change now and we've added that to the project uh, issues. At this point, I'm going to jump back into the project overview in PPM just to show you that those changes will be reflected. So I'll refresh my project in, in uh, PPM and I'll go to the project details page. And now all projects with that you know, will actually have the issues listed as well. Um, some of the other detailed things that you can do, and I showed this a little bit on the first page, is be able to link um, directly to like the risks. So if you were looking at this on the SharePoint site here, um, you can dir link directly to the risk and that will actually open up the actual risk within HP PPM and you could edit the risk and save it at that point. One other thing to, to talk about here is when we talk about the types, and I'll go ahead and edit this page one more time. Uh, when we talk about the types of, of things that you can display within SharePoint. So I edit that and then if I go ahead and edit this web part again, I just want to get in and show that anything that Google Charts basically can accept within these visualization types. So you have a grid, the data list, and then when you, when you choose Chart, it's fundamentally anything that, that Google Chart handles well, basically, you'll be able to display those chart types within uh, the SharePoint site and ultimately within the project overview in HPPPM.